All right, guys, let's jump straight into game two. So this is game two in the best of three series of Legendary Day versus Out of Control for the AOE2 HDOZ clans, Arabia 16 1v1s tournament. If you like this tournament and you would like to see more of their stuff, you can find all sorts of information on the clan, their website, and future tournaments from them in the bottom right corner of the screen. And if you enjoy my commentary, you can find more on my YouTube channel, link in the top right. So this is game two in the series of Legendary Day versus Out of Control. Let's jump straight into this. Alright, it looks like Mongolia right off the bat. And we have Persians versus Mayans. Ooh, interesting. So Out of Control is on Mayans, and we have the Persians here from Dave on Mongolia. Mongolia is quite an interesting map because it's, it's similar to Arabia, but it's much easier to wall off due to all these cliffs everywhere. So both players can wall off if they choose to, and both civilizations here are quite adept at managing an economy. The Persians with their faster town centers and the Mayans with their more efficient resources. Yeah, out of control is wisely doing what you should do while you're waiting for your sheep to get to your town center, is chop some wood. Get a little bit of extra wood out of the exchange. And yeah, he's got the standard, uh, oh, is that seven? That is seven on sheep, interesting. All right, so Dave is going for four in his lumber camp which means that he wants to get a little bit of extra wood out. It could mean that he is uh, considering getting an earlier barracks, or perhaps he wants to seek a wall off of some sort. We will see. Very interesting is that Out of Control actually has so many villagers on sheep right now, and no lumber camp. Hmm. I wonder what this means. I'm not entirely sure why he would uh, not go lumber camp. <clears throat> and he already has loom. Very interesting. Whereas Dave does not, because he has great faith in his micromanagement abilities. And he's going to get a very good boar lure right here. Oh yeah, this is amazing. Perfect, perfect boar lure. It's a shame that they have two sheep uh, decaying right now. Perhaps these villagers in the forage bushes could be better spent on these sheep, because the forage bushes don't decay, whereas the sheep do. So I don't want to waste this food. This is just food that is slowly being burned. Okay, now he's going for a lumber camp. This is interesting, and he's got five hitting on it. Yeah, a lot of wasted food here. That's a shame. I'm not sure why he's uh, going for berry bushes instead, because sheep actually give you food slightly faster. And your villagers don't have to walk to drop this off if it's under the town center. It's just burning free food. So you got the mill coming from out of control. This is very strange that he would, well, put like nine villagers on sheep and wait for his lumber camp so long. That's very, very strange. All right, so another reason why uh, Dave decided to have more on wood than usual was so that he could get this extra mill out so that he can hunt these delicious, delicious deer. This is gonna be a tricky poor lure. <laughs> So wisely, Dave has got Loom beforehand. I think that's a very, very good decision because this is quite a long walk and this villager is going to take a lot of free damage. This is going to be a real. Oh, this is going to be a really bad boar lure from out of control. Ooh, that's. That's actually terrible. Uh, now these villagers have to walk really far to the town center or mill, and it's kind of curious that he would start having this one decay. Um, without having enough villagers to saturate it. Seems almost like a waste. These forage, again, you can wait on your forage bushes because they're not going anywhere, whereas the boar meat sure is, and the sheep meat sure is. Great scouting here from Dave, though, because he's seeing that these villagers are totally going for these deer right now. Super obvious. Dave is making a mental note of this as he has scouted it. He knows the deer are here. He saw the villagers.
Yeah, I, um, so there's no barracks from Dave yet, which shows that he is most definitely going for a much more defensive strategy. We might even see a fast castle uh, from him, or maybe he'll just go into scouts. I think he's going to try and wall off, though, perhaps go for some sort of fast castle. Yeah, you can tell he's up to no good because, uh, look at his population. This shows that he is really considering going for some sort of castle age aggression, as opposed to some feudal age, because he's advancing at 27 out of 30 population instead of the, you know, standard 24 to 21. And yeah, this is the mining camp coming up, so he's probably thinking knights. I'm thinking knights from him. Yeah, Legendary Dave just seems to be ahead of out of control in every aspect right now. Well, that's a really weird position for the gold mine to spawn. That's a shame that Out of Control has to uh, place his mine all the way over here. While it is actually relatively easy to defend uh, with like a wall off of some sort, but these villagers are gonna, they're, they're pretty vulnerable because they're very separated from the rest of his base. All right, so we've got the much later Feudal Age coming up from Dave. What's Out of Control doing? Out of control appears to be doing the same with the 27 out of 30 population. But if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it looks like Legendary Dave has just a bit more food. His economy is a little bit better suited to this. I expect to see a blacksmith and a stable quite quickly. Although, um, both players just could go for a blacksmith and a market. Hmm, okay, so... Out of control has plopped down a barracks, and Dave's scouting right now is flawless. He's just demonstrating how important scouting is, so he knows the barracks is here, which means that uh, out of control is definitely, definitely going for some sort of um, castle age aggression, whereas Dave has not shown his hand quite yet, or at least out of control doesn't know this for sure. Um, because the barracks means that he's going to put down an archer range in advance, which means that he's heavily considering... Uh, crossbowmen or maybe perhaps plumed archers uh, as soon as he hits the castle age. Whereas since uh, since Out of Control has not quite scouted yeah, he has barely scouted Dave's base at all. He has no idea what Dave is up to. So I really like this choice to get some aggressive scouting here from Dave so he completely knows what's going on. Yeah, And then he's going to put the stable down so he's obviously going knights and he'll be able to advance really, really, really quickly. As soon as the stable's up, he's going to click to the next stage. Alright, this is a really, really interesting decision. The market. I don't think I've ever seen anyone try this, where... Okay, well, where's this other Feudal Age building that he's going to use to advance? I guess he doesn't have one. So anyway, the reason why you never see anything like a barracks into a market... Um... Well, it's because it doesn't really make any sense. He did, this barracks here is completely unnecessary if he was just going to go for the blacksmith and market, which is the super greedy fast castle thingy. That you can see that I do a lot uh, in my Black Forest videos, because this is just a waste of wood. Um, he, he doesn't, he really doesn't need it right now. And that's going to slow down his castle age a bit, whereas uh, Dave is already clicked up. The difference isn't that much, it's maybe 20, 30 seconds, but... Uh, Dave could exploit that window. I like the decision to get double bit axe from Dave. I think it's a very, very important um, technology that you would like to get as you're advancing up. <coughs> and yeah, I, I suppose that the lack of a, an archer range would definitely mean that he's going Eagle Warriors. I'm not sure if I like that. Any yeah, the market makes it a little more obvious too. Don't forget that Eagle Warriors. Um, and yeah, he should. I still think he should have built the barracks a little bit later. Just to speed up his castle age. Like, you put down these two first, and then you can put down the barracks afterwards. Because all the time that he spent building the barracks is just a little bit of time that uh, Dave could get us get a slight technology advantage. Anyway. So he's most definitely going eagles. It's pretty obvious. And that's because of this market. And the lack of archery range, of course. And look at Dave with his scouting. Good on him. Good on him. This is some great, great play from Dave right now trying to take the situation. So anyway, yeah, he can just sell some wood or food 
to get lots of gold, and Eagle Warriors are almost entirely gold cost, 50 gold, 20 wood. And I expect him to get the uh, level 1 infantry defense upgrade ASAP, or these Eagle Warriors won't be super effective, but... Hmm. I'm not entirely sure about the decision to um, go Eagles from him, if that is what he is going. I'm assuming that's what he's going. Just because... Does, does he actually know um, that there are knights coming? Okay, yeah, he totally knows there are knights coming. He's scouting this now. Actually, yeah, he might be scouting this just now. So perhaps he didn't know. And the knights are going to be pretty good against the Eagle Warriors. The Eagle Warriors have a very, very, very slight attack bonus versus knights so that it's not super one-sided. Well, versus cavalry in general. But knights are still going to eat right through them. And look at this great play from Dave right here. Demonstrating that the defense upgrade makes all the difference. Okay, so Spearman. Hmm. He has no wood whatsoever, um, so he's only gonna have one of these barracks, and it looks like he's only using it to plop out to the Spearman. I do like the positioning of his town center, though, because it does double protect this area, so that these knights definitely won't want to go under here. And he's wisely put uh, putting the spearmen in front of this, so great play from out of control, but it doesn't look like he's opting for any sort of offensive plan, and I think this really favors Dave, because Dave has these ultra-tanky knights with the level 1 defense upgrade. Always prioritize the defense upgrade on your melee units. It's going to make a pretty good difference. He's going to lose this scout for free here, but that was kind of hard to avoid. Uh, I surely hope he's watching his knights, though, because this knight might die. Uh... Yeah, Auto Control does have quite a strange build going on. I am not sure what this is. I, I guess he's... Yeah, he's doing what he did last game, which is... Try some weird fast castle boom shenanigans. And yeah, this, this barracks here uh, was pretty much a waste. I, I He has the economy for Eagle Warriors, honestly, but out of control just seems to be a much more defensive player. And I think this really favors Dave, because Dave can... Dave can call all the shots this game, whereas Dave can, you know, he can do what out of control is doing and focus on his economy with this extra town center, which out of control wisely scouts. Um, but at the same time, he can contain out of control in his base and really force him to re- What? Okay, so he's going back into archers. Uh, no point in trying to repair this. I, I think that's... Oh, alright, well if he's going to pull two villagers off, he should be able to do it, yeah. Okay, so good play from out of control there. Force these knights back as the spearmen come in. But, uh, these are idle, and... Okay, yeah, I do like that he's putting a town center here, because this is his main goal, and uh, one of his best wood supplies. So this will be a great, great town center to have. However, I don't think Legendary Dave will let him get that. These spearmen here are all going to die. Uh, he's focus-firing the wrong knight here. You want to kill the knight that's on super low HP. And yeah, if he loses this gold, it is absolutely over. So he's recognized this, and he's trying to put down the town center, and... Good reaction speed here. He's going to try and uh, keep that up. Shot it. Yeah, it looks like he will actually be able to get this town center up. In the meantime, Dave is just, you know, he's massaging his economy right now. He's getting everything quite settled. Sending more knights to do some raiding action. He's not going to be able to get anything done from this side, unfortunately, because uh, Out of Control has quite a nice wall off over here. Knights are not going to be able to get through this inefficient raid. And yeah, once again, these knights have been repelled. Uh, good control here from out of control to repair that wall. And yeah, these knights aren't going to be able to do that much here. Still very curious that he would have this archer range right here, and... I don't know if this market has really done anything so far, although... Perhaps he can use it to exchange some resources. Yeah, I don't know why he has an archery range right now. And he's still going for spears. Perhaps what he could have needed is maybe a second barracks, and... You know, Dave's base is pretty open, so it is actually vulnerable to some evil warrior raiding, perhaps? Uh, but most importantly, I was thinking just get more spears. Maybe get some pikes. 
Okay, so he's going back into archers. This is not a good idea. Not a good idea. I believe the Persian knights do get extra attack bonus versus archers. Okay, they do. So yeah, the Persian knights get extra attack bonus versus archers, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, these archers have no upgrades, and these knights have the level 1 defense upgrade, so they're taking 1 damage from these archers. And he's going to need to reach critical mass with these archers uh, before they're really going to be effective. Ooh. Ooh, Dave is going to keep both of those knights. Oh, never mind. Oh! Nope, never mind. Well. Not sure about this decision to run those knights through that fire. I think that's exactly what Out of Control wanted. Um, and I would not have done that, because he lost two knights for free. And I don't think he'll get to do much eco damage here, because these spears are around, and it's just not a cost-effective battle for him to take. So perhaps Legendary Dave should hold off a bit on the knights, and just boom behind this, which it seems like he's doing. He's got a lot of town centers, we've got a good economy going on, and I think what he's going to need to do is he's going to need to get a mangonel and just siege this. There's a nice hill at the front right here, he can destroy this archer range with ease. But yeah, I, I'm not sure about this decision to go straight back into archers. He's going to need a lot of them for it to be effective. He only has one range, and he's going to need the crossbowmen and a ton of upgrades on them before they can start doing stuff. So it can be a worthwhile investment, yes, if he can get them out, but... The Persian Knights are quite strong against archers, and great decision here from Dave. Really, really great decision to get the level 2 defense upgrades. So these are going to be some tanky, tanky knights. And these... Feudal Age units here with absolutely no upgrades whatsoever are really going to start losing their effectiveness. Yep, he's using all these extra town centers to pump out the villagers much, much, much better. So many, so many villagers. Let's compare populations. Out of control actually has a slight pop advantage. Okay, so this archery range is... Useless, I suppose, because now he has a second barracks. Curious that he would put it right here instead of somewhat, he's, I don't know, in an area that he could spawn pikes to defend his base. I do like the decision, um, really, to upgrade the pikemen, though. Dave has both bloodlines and a level 2 defense upgrade, so he's researching his technologies in the absolute perfect order. Dave demonstrating that he totally knows what he's doing and that he is quite great at this knight mumbo jumbo. So he's got super duper tanky knights, and these pikemen, well they have to be pikemen at least to be relevant at all at this point, and he should really consider getting the infantry defense upgrades to make him a little more useful. Curious positioning of the barracks though, because it's pretty vulnerable. And we'll see what he's gonna use this barracks for. Another range coming out, and he's producing archers with no upgrades. Well, perhaps you should prioritize the crossbowmen and the fletching first. I don't know. I do like how Dave is going to force some villagers to come and uh, repair this, but I don't think Out of Control will be able to uh, actually defend this wall anymore. This wall is as good as a go on. Not that these knights can do any damage, though. I would pull them back, Mr. Dave. You don't want to lose them. I think Out of Control is running into the same problem he did last game, where uh, Dave is remembering that technologies win games, and Out of Control is forgetting that. He has Fletching now, yes, but uh, he's going to need Crossbowmen. Crossbowmen is way more important than Fletching, and they're almost the same cost. Hmm, I would have ran the Knights to the left, perhaps, because they're going to have to take a lot of free damage here. He might just lose them all if he's not paying attention, though. He'll actually use the hill advantage with these two. Oh, the hill advantage! Oh, except he's running that knight behind. But anyway, yeah, the hill advantage here should win this fight. Alright, phew. Alright, so he's finally getting crossbow in right now. This is very good, very good. And... Alright, so I'm assuming what this villager over here in the middle of nowhere is for is to uh, perhaps secure this gold mine or put some stables in the middle of nowhere so that he can... Uh, pump out some raiding cavalry units from a strange angle so that out of control won't know where they're coming from. It'll make it hard to defend. A little bit of sloppy control here. He's going to lose a few knights for free. 
Okay, these crossbowmen are slowly starting to become relevant now that they have fletching. Um, as soon as they get Bodkin Arrow, they'll actually start to be somewhat threatening. But he's gonna need a lot more to take out Dave. I think Dave is wisely... Okay, forward Siege Workshop over here. I think Dave is wisely recognizing that he needs to either amp up his offense, like invest a lot more in it, or just back off. And I think he's just opting to back off. He's got all these town centers that he can use to pump out villagers now and really secure an economic lead. Being the Persians as well, this really does favor his uh, favor his economy. And he's not producing knights anymore. I'm gonna be curious to see how much vision out of control actually has. Yeah, that university is just a bit close. I don't know if he has town patrol or not. Um, I think he only has town watch, but if he had town patrol, he could probably see that. So I'm not sure if that university is quite necessary, but that does mean though that he can't he has to slip units around this way, and it does protect the siege workshop a bit. Alright, so I guess Dave is just booming right now. He's got some rams coming out. Looks like he's gonna advance straight to the Imperial Age, which is what that university was for. Imperial Age coming out from him. This villager will live. Yeah, it looks like he's opting to forward some buildings on out of control right now. Another town center coming out. We got a very, 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 very strong economy from Dave right now. He's got a ton of excess food. Perhaps he should uh, get a market and use that to adjust that a bit. And maybe he needs a few less farmers and some more lumberjacks. That way he can pump out some more interesting archery range. I wonder what those are for. Perhaps they'll be for hand cannoneers, it's hard to say. Alright, so Adam Control does see this, and Dave wisely just cancels all of these ranges because he realizes that he is not going to be able to hold this forward anymore. Thankfully, he didn't invest too much in it, so he'll be just fine. Hmm, curious decision to put a town center right there. Because Dave is fully, fully aware of this. These stables are as good as dead. Now, I was wondering what this archery range was for, because, you know, hand cannoneers is a thought against all these pikemen, and... Of course, he opted for forging instead of the defense upgrade. He should really opt for the defense upgrade first. Because they can get a few extra hits. Uh, but yeah, I don't know about hand cannoneers, because he's got a ton of crossbowmen. And the cuspermen actually have full upgrades right now, so this is great. So, out of control is actually starting to reach that critical mass of crossbowmen that Dave should fear. Curious that out of control is not stopping these stables from going up, though, but. I'm gonna grab a free relic right here. This is quite important. I would like to see a stronger offense from Dave, though, to exploit the fact that. Well, you know, he's got a tech advantage. He's in the Imperial Age right now. Alright, so he's gonna pump these rams out over here, and he's probably gonna start. Attacking that town center, but he's got absolutely no military units to back that up. He should not squander this opportunity. He has the imperial advent, imperial age advantage. He really needs to make guys. Okay, not stars. Interesting decision. I kind of like it. It can. It's a. It's a sink for his food. All right, so. Nice that he got to start that stable right now to force these guys to walk around. Clusters will be nice, they'll get eaten by these pikemen for breakfast, of course, but he can just constantly raid with that. He's gonna need more than just hussars, of course, though, so... I'd like to see some military buildings perhaps over here in a safer location instead of relying on this one villager building these stables super slowly. Well, that's some wood and gold down the drain. Alright, so this forward opportunity is absolutely blundered, and Dave has realized this, and he is wisely moving the aggression somewhere else. I like this. I like this decision. Should have perhaps abandoned it a little bit further, but that's fine. He's gonna need a plan for these pikemen, of course, um, so we'll see what he does. Perhaps maybe some hand cannoneers are in order for those. 
there's quite a few pikemen from out of control. Sure, they lack a lot of upgrades, but they still do eat hussars for breakfast. That's no question about that. And yeah, he has reached critical mass with these crossbowmen, so those hussars aren't going to be super effective. Still looks like it's hussar city time. Hussars on hussars on hussars on hussars. But what is he going to do against those pikes? You can't just go solely hussars against all these pikemen. Ooh, slipping in these hussars will be quite significant if he can do that. I do like Out of Control's decision to immediately tech into Halberd ears, and yeah, now he's got the level 1 defense upgrade, so now they're extra threatening. Out of Control, this game, is getting all of his blacksmith upgrades, uh, which means that his units will be quite, quite effective. The hussars are getting pumped out right now. Um, they're gonna get eaten by those Halberds for breakfast, but... I think, uh, I think Dave is just trying to go for a little bit of eco-harassment. Mm, looks like he'll get quite a bit of damage, actually. A little bit of eco-damage here. Because he's ringing the town bell. Although I guess that's a little bit of... I guess that's better. Oh, no, no, those villagers are safe. They don't need to be inside that. The hussars are coming, and so are the rams, so he's going to just take out these houses right now. That's actually going to be quite effective against Out of Control, because Out of Control is already, like, getting perpetually housed this game. And if he loses these houses, um, it could be quite bad. I think a lot of people forget that how that population is a resource in itself, and that taking out the, uh, taking out the houses of a player can be quite devastating towards them. Housing them, preventing them from getting any, uh, any reinforcements, and... Yeah, that's going to be pretty bad. The Hussars are coming in from Dave right now, and they're going to do quite a bit of damage. Look at him slip them in there. He's just going to keep out of control perpetually Town Bell wrong. Um, he, you know, out of control should really pull these troops back and defend his base right now. He can't afford to keep all of these villagers idle inside this town center. He's going to need to actually pull these back or push forward with them. Not that he can do any pushing because he doesn't have any siege units, but he should really pull back to defend with those. Dave here demonstrating some quite good control. Showing that uh, raiding is very, very important, so... Great play from Dave here. And I think out of control, as soon as he pulls back these guys, will be able to have the situation on lockdown. I mean, a lot of these buildings are going to die here for free, but again, the decision to just go Hussars, uh, I'm not sure about that one. He's doing a lot of eco damage, don't get me wrong, but he's throwing away so much food right now for free that... Okay, yeah, so he's going crossbowmen to deal with those halberds. Not sure if I like that. It, it does get the job done, it, it does, and the Hussars combined with something to deal with the Hellburgers is exactly what he should be doing. But I think Hand Cannoneers would be just a bit better in this situation. Uh, he doesn't have Arbalist, so... Uh, the, these Mayan Arbs will be quite much more effective. He doesn't get Bracer either, actually, on the crossbow, so... That's why it's common for Persian players to back up their cavalry units with the... Um, the Hand Cannoneers. Not sure if I like this decision to go full man mode with these rams. Perhaps he should destroy all these uh, safer, safer units. I do like the forward castle, though. Gotta press the advantage while we can. These rams are as good as dead, but he might get to do quite a bit of damage to this town center. He might actually finish it, though, before all these rams die. And these crossbowmen are just sitting ducks. I'm not sure about this. I think hand cannoneers might be a little bit better in this situation. Sure, the hand cannoneers uh, do get eaten by these arbalists for breakfast, and they have full upgrades, and out of control is, yeah. He's been spot on with his upgrades this game, I think that's quite important. And it's making the difference right now. I really like out of control's army composition, uh, just compared to Dave's. It really just is the better army comp, just look at these hussars just being thrown away right now, and just dying and dying and dying. And yeah, he can just replace that town center. No biggie, no biggie. This is just so much money for Dave throwing down the drain. Of course, Dave has, well, billions of dollars he can afford to throw away money, but 
I'd like to see something more substantial. We wouldn't want out of control to build up, so... These officers have shown that there have been... At least their effectiveness window has long since passed. be interesting to see what Dave does. His out of control has now completely boomed on this, and he's finally getting his first castle out. These officers are just not doing anything. Perhaps he should transition into something more substantial. Alright, well this forward is absolutely done. Alright, so he's gonna wisely start doing like some honor beer shenanigans. I like that decision a lot. Uh, he, what he needed to do is he needed to pick some sort of anti archer unit, which he did, which is Hussars. And he needs to have an anti halberdier unit in here as well. And he does not have an anti halberdier unit. Well, he has the crossbowmen, but they're pretty much bollocks against these bullets. And they're, they're not really good enough against the halberdiers with the max defense upgrade. I think, yeah, he's got. Alright, so he's going for chemistry. That's why he put the, another university down. He's gonna try and wall this off the house right now. I think it's a good decision. Expect to see plumed archers from out of control, actually. Yeah, he's gonna get conscription, yeah, and he's gonna put down the siege. So great play here from out of control. He has completely turned around the situation. Dave looked like he had things on lockdown, but at the end of the day, I would say that out of control's army composition here is changing the game. These arbalists are just proving to be quite useful, and the arbs and the halberds are just a useful combination. Tack on some siege rams or some trebuchets, and it's a tough combo to beat. And you cannot beat it with hussars. Dave has so much money that he could be using right now to pump out something really, really substantial, maybe even elephants. Because elephants do eat both types of these units for breakfast. Obviously, Halberdiers do win in a cost-effective war, but the fact that the elephants do cleave damage could be quite interesting. <coughs> I just want to see some hand cannoneers from him, perhaps. He is going to Onagers, though. I think that's smart. I think that is. Um, but I would like to see no more Hussars. They've done basically nothing. And I think by the time we go to the achievement screen and we see how many units were lost from Dave, we can see that all that food was burned. Sure, he can afford to do that, but... <clears throat> it's the time that's the resource here that's getting wasted. <clears throat> because out of control is becoming out of control at this point. Mm. I expect to see some siege weapons coming from out of control right now, and he's going to try and really seize the advantage. Dave is in deep trouble right now. He should probably stop building hussars. <coughs> I would like to see units that are not hussars. Wait a minute. Okay, so out of control is popular, but yeah. Look at this. Look at all this money. Look at this population. So in a situation um, where you have tons of dollars... Okay, yeah, this castle's screwed. Anyway, yeah, in a situation where you have tons of money, like 18 billion dollars in your bank, and you're at like 130 population, you're nowhere near the pop cap. That means it's time for more unit production facilities. And of course he's building more stables for more hussars. Okay, good. Alright, hand engineers. Yes, great decision. His hand can use to make short work of these halberdiers, and now his hussars might actually do something. <coughs> Still, though, I I feel like he could have just gone paladins or something like that much sooner, but this will work a lot better now that he has some onagers and hand can use to go back up these hussars, but. Sending them in one at a time, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of, and oh, all these siege reps are caught horribly out of position right now. They're all dead. The halberds are coming in, and out of control is taking control of the situation right now. He is just... Well, he's just dominating Dave right now, and Dave should probably finish this castle while he still can, or just delete it. 
I'm still... Okay, this is uh, not a good position for the castle. This is obviously in trebuchet range, and... Actually, all this junk's in trebuchet range. Out of Control really has the situation on lockdown right now. I, I really like how Dave decided to go back in the hand cannoneers, though, and he's got these monitors now. This is great. This is what he should have been doing, is stop making trash units unless he has to. And, and really invest in the more expensive things to take control of the situation, to really to take care of these arbalists. And these honors are going to be great. Alright, yeah, so they're, they're doing some good work here. He doesn't have nearly enough troops, though, compared to out of control, so these are all going to die. And that's pretty expensive, that's pretty expensive. I mean, just a minute ago, Dave had like 3k, 2, 2 to 3k gold in his bank. He still has quite a bit of gold. I would like to see a more substantial unit from him. <coughs> Alright, so he's got this forward castle now. It would be interesting to see if he does try for anything trebuchet related. He is finally massing some of his guys, though, and it looks like he did hold off over here. I would like to see more unit production facilities from Dave, though, like a lot more. He should be perpetually at the pop cap by this point in the game. Uh, it's an hour in, so he should be perpetually at the pop cap because out of control sure is, and he just has more troops here. There's a lot of things that are making the difference this game, but a, a big factor right now is Dave is making the right guys this time. He is his army comp now. I think is the superior army composition. However. He has almost no troops by comparison. If you look at the unit production facilities or just the amount of units that Out of Control has, he's just pumping guys out like nobody's business. He's always close to his pop cap. Whereas Dave is still stuck at like 138 population, so... That is not good. I think this game is almost over, actually. Uh, out of Control now has full upgrades on everything. The siege ramps are coming in. Uh, Dave is truly trying, but ooh, the decision to go back into Eagles here is actually brilliant, in my opinion. I think that, yeah, it's a great move from out of control, and I think he's got the gold for it. Uh, not necessarily, but he does have a market. Either way, these Eagles really do deal great with the Zonigers, and uh, even the Hand Cannoneers don't stand up that well to them. The Eagle Warriors also defeat Hussars with not much difficulty. I like the castle on the hill here, but that thing is also as good as dead. The difference right here is the population. If you just compare them, out of control, just he just has more units. Dave is recognizing the situation and he's building completely correct units in this decision, you know. He's got these skirmishers coming out, he's he's really trying, but he doesn't have the unit production facilities to defend from this attack. <coughs> Yeah, it looks like uh, Out of Control is just going to slowly siege down Dave's base, and it is definitely GG in this situation. Not enough unit production facilities, Dave's population is only going down, whereas Out of Control has been at a solid 200 population for a long time. Yep. So Dave recognizes that the situation is not in his favor, and he has resigned here. Great play from both players. Dave definitely had the game in the bag early on, um, but... I think he invested way too long in units that clearly weren't working for him. And what really won the game here is that Out of Control was just producing units quicker. He just had a much larger army. And he did, you know, he was a little slow to build up, but when he did, you know, he was really rolling. We saw some great play here from Out of Control, turning an almost lost situation into, well, a situation in which he's completely in charge. Uh, he really just had the superior unit choice here, and... Yeah, they're just the superior unit choice here, I think, is out of control, definitely chose the correct units for the situation. And, you know, even the siege rams were a great decision, too, because they resist all the things that uh, Dave was using. And in the event that Onagers come out, out of control's got some eagles, and he's got a lot of halberds, so... Really, he just chose the right units for the situation. So, great game here for both players. Let's go check out the achievements. Okay, yeah, so this is a big issue. Um, when you've lost this many units, and I, I guess it depends on what map it is, because in, on maps like Black Forest and Michi, you can be expected to lose a lot of units, but... And on one, in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, 
You definitely don't want to have a unit KDA like this. This just means that his units were very ineffective and he had to lose so many of them. Uh, Hussars to be exact. But this is the real deciding factor right here. This is absolutely what won the game. And I always try to identify uh, what won the game here. And it is most definitely the largest army in this situation. Uh, out of Control just had, well, almost three times as many troops as Dave did at one point in the game. And at least double the entire time, so... That's what one here is. Dave finally did transition into uh, the, really the superior choices, great choices from him, but he just didn't have enough units, unfortunately. And yeah, he had by far the better economy. I mean, look at this. Like, the difference in food and wood collected is staggering. Absolutely massive difference here in economy, and only slightly more gold from out of control, so Dave had a much stronger economy. He had so much money that he could have spent and by the time that he started spending it on the right units, he just did not have enough production facilities to uh, outproduce out of control. Yeah, and the upgrade advantage right here, also quite significant, but it was the army advantage that won the game. Right, yeah, so a great game from both players. Uh, this was the game changing factor is the dark line, which represents the military units. And this is just the civilian population, so way more troops from out of control. Way more troops this game, and great play from him, demonstrating that he definitely has deserved to get this far and deserve that win. So, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. If you enjoyed this commentary, you can check out more commentaries on my YouTube channel. And this will also get uploaded to the AOE2 HDOZ Clans official YouTube, which you can find at the bottom right, with all of their other information. This was game two of three for the Arabia 16 1v1s tournament, hosted by the AOE2 HDOZ Clan. And now, it's an even. 1-1. One, one. Out of control has won once. Dave has won once. Who will take the best of three series? Alright, I'm going to take another short two-minute break, and I will be right back.